You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello and welcome to Claret and Blue podcast. We've got a special little mini slot with Gareth Barry, courtesy of BT Sport. First of all, Gareth, we've had you on the on the Claret and Blue podcast before. One thing I forgot to ask back then was, was there ever any prospect of you you coming back to Aston Villa uh, during the kind of later part of your career? It never got close, no. I always I remember certain times in my career, certainly when I uh, left City and joined Everton, I always asked the question, they give the Liverpool are they they interested in a midfielder. But uh, yeah, there's never no love coming back, which sort of surprised me because I, I still had plenty to offer at that point. I always thought I'd, I'd play for Villa again at the end of my career, and uh, yeah, that's why I always asked my agent to, to make the call. But yeah, there was never never enough love or well, any love coming back. So yeah, put that on the record for you. <laughs> From a Villa fan's point of view, it was almost as if the, you know the opportunity when you could have come back was when Villa fell out of the Premier League was that a, a kind of was that a factor and you're not coming back yeah, the calls always is kind of when at the right time I thought you know that they're, they're um, you know it wasn't I was never I played in the championship for for uh, West Brom so that was never a worry um, but yeah there was times where Villa just couldn't they were struggling financially they were in a bad place so but yeah there was opportunities that Villa could have signed me I felt but yeah it's, it's one of them they, they were looking to go down different roads Ross Barkley was a player who you played with at Everton. Did it surprise you that he's had to go through a little bit of a law before reviving his career back at Aston Villa? No, not completely surprised. Um, no, Ross, for well, obviously my time at Everton, um, but, you know, leaving leaving hometown club to go and move to the capital, it was, it, it was going to bring challenges. Being a, a squad with a lot of players, Champions League for it's, it, it brings different types of challenges and not everyone adapts and you know Ross for all the ability he has it, it, it would, he'd be honest enough to say he didn't, didn't probably reach the levels that he's expected to and he's probably showing now at, at Villa but you know you find this a lot with players they don't they don't always get the perfect fit with their moves and Chelsea didn't seem to suit him the style that the managers had for him down there this, this season it reminds me of when he was in form at Everton he's He's playing with freedom, which Ross needs, and you know his confidence. You can tell you know, sky high, like a lot of the Villa players are at the moment. Does it seem that Aston Villa is a good fit for him now? Yeah, he's exactly what his career needed. He, he had a, it was a clever signing because for me, he had about a point to prove to, to the Chelsea hierarchy uh, that he, you know, he is good enough and he, he can play a certain style at this level, uh, affect games, you know, assists, score goals. But you know. He, yeah, it was a really clever sign. I knew Ross would have a point to prove, and you know he's showing that. And he's, he's he's fitting well to a team uh, that are confident. Obviously, Ross Barkley and, and Jack Grealish are good mates. I think they've got, got a friendship off the pitch. Anyway, uh, they're now showing that rapport on the pitch. You've probably been asked this a million times, but just how good is Jack Grealish? Season after season, he's he's maturing and uh, understanding what he can and can't do, and. And what he's just improved his game, if you like. You know, if you look back three years, you, you, you look at his game. I think he's not releasing the ball at the right times, and he's learned. He's learned what to do and what not to do in certain areas. And for me, that's a sign of a, a clever footballer. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a joy to watch at the moment. The, the confidence he's playing with, uh, yeah, Villa are getting the benefits. Has Villa's revival come at a good time this season? Because there's obviously going to be lots and lots of attention and, and, and people interested in Jack Grealish again this summer. He's enjoying his football, he's captain in his, his boyhood club. He's, you know, made the most of that moment. Um, he's, he's playing with freedom. Uh, he knows the manager's got the respect of him. Uh, I think for now, make make the most of uh, enjoying your football. Try and, try and finish this season strongly with Aston Villa. Get them in European in the European place and, uh, you know, go from there. You just mentioned Europe there, Gareth. Do you think that's a realistic proposition for Villa this season? Yeah, I think looking for looking towards the game this week, um, it's going to be a test for both teams. Their their mindset, the, the the squad and the players now they're in a different position. You know, the, the, the both teams are having a good season, but now the expectations in season slowly start to change. Um, the the players will feel that as well. Um, you know. This is a, a. We're in a position now. The expectations are to keep delivering it. Can we? Can we push higher into a, 
into a European spot. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch that game with interest because uh, just see how both sets of players react. But from what I've seen so far from Aston Villa, there's no reason why they can't finish top six. How have you taken to the punditry, Gareth? Is it a mixture of you know trying to get used to a new career and trying to cope with what it's like, you know, watching matches in empty stadiums? The empty stadiums is why I'm not missing playing. I think it's made me realise that playing football uh, in front of fans and that atmosphere is is one of the best things about being a professional footballer. And, and, and something when they do come back in, I think he's going to realise I'm missing football. So uh, yeah, that's that's sort of helping me not miss it. But um, yeah, it just shows you as well. You can pick up on the leaders on the foot on the pitch. Uh, the, the players who really affect the, the, play, the team with communication. So there's, there's a lot of other things you can pick up on it. Louis Barry, your namesake, starred on a, on a recent game on BT. Uh, did you know much about him from, from your time at West Brom? Yeah, I, I knew about him because there was a lot of talk. Um, I'd seen him play for England at, uh, up from the 15 or 16 at a young level, so I, I knew about him. So I knew his movement was very good. He's very quick, you know, certainly similar to like a Michael Owen type player who's a nightmare for defenders to mark because of his sort of low sense of gravity, the way he, uh, the way he moves. So, yeah, I knew a lot about him and uh, yeah, it's great to see him as well as all the other younger players uh, put in a, a performance that represented Villa in a great light. And did you ever see him on the on the training pitches at Albion? Um, I, I never trained with him, I don't think. But, um, no, I'd seen, I'd seen him in bits and pieces with uh, the Villa youth set up. Uh, I knew he's, he's a very confident character. Um, so yeah I'm expecting uh, I'm hoping he's going to turn out to be a great uh, signing for Villa and uh, yeah representing that great name well <laughs> What would your advice be for, for a young kid like Louis Barry coming through the ranks at Aston Villa as a teenager I think for Louis at the moment and uh, you know I, I, I'm a, I would like to see him be an option for Villa at the moment um, you know you allow more subs on the bench I just feel he's, he's different to what they've got um, I think between now and the end of the season I'd like to see him uh, give him a chance on the bench and there'll be games where you are looking for something different to what Villa have got I know they've got Keenan Davis different, completely different style striker so I'd like to see him give him a chance but my advice would be just, just to be patient at the moment uh, that's the hardest thing when, when you think you're doing everything you can he's scoring goals uh, for the under 23s he's had one game for the first team he scored He's, you get to that level what, what more can I do you'll be thinking what should I do should I go and see the manager but for me just be patient and keep keep doing it no matter what level you're playing at so uh, and your chance will come just be ready That's that would be the only advice I'd give to thanks very much for your time again Gareth brilliant to catch up uh, hopefully it's another three points for Villa against West Ham Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, up the villa. Up the villa.